In case you haven't been paying attention, it's been a rough, I was going to say a couple of weeks, a couple of months. It's been a rough year for Disney, particularly the MCU, because the once Sterling franchise has fallen on a bit of a hard time. They've hit a rough patch, if you will, specifically with the Marvels. And I did a much more in-depth video on this. It came out earlier this morning. Everything got a little futzed up. Don't worry about it. But if you want a more concise breakdown when it comes to the box office and how they really are boned going forward, please, I do encourage you to go check that out. I just want to, you know, reinforce that their big pivot movie, the one that was supposed to set up so many fantastical things, isn't accomplishing a goddamn thing at the box office so bad that three weeks, less than a month into its theatrical run when I've run back the numbers before just showing that it doesn't hit the dismal lows that it already did not but a few days into its release hadn't been accomplished from comparable titles in the MCU anything earlier than a month uh 45 days into its release but the marvels well hey guess what women can do it better they can do it in heels they right there they can they can go ahead and sink to such depths quicker than any other film that's out there apparently the script writers are taking notes from big mike where you know when they go low we go lower after four weeks on the big screen the comic book tentpole is running out of steam with 80 million dollars in north america and 197 million dollars globally and we have the actuals unlike last night's video but i will go ahead and apprise everybody of that here in a moment the important part to re-emphasize is the studio wrote on sunday in a note to the press with the marvel's box office now winding down i'm sure they were anticipating this you know being released ahead of thanksgiving thinking that it would get the big old boost from that long weekend and oh yes the holiday season okay you got crimbus and you have new year's that's out there they were hoping that this was going to go ahead and carry them through just like several other releases last year it was black panther the year before that it was the eternals but then they could just, you know, hop on over to that. And in 2019, when things were normal, Disney had you know, the rise of Skywalker to go ahead and buoy them at a point in time where everything that they released, everything that they touched, regardless of quality, would turn a billion dollars. And now, I'm not even going to get to a quarter billion dollars. We will stop weekend reporting of international and global grosses on the title, meaning that what we see right here with the firm dailies, we got confirmation on the weekends, and uh, yeah, guess what, guys? It's worse than the projections, because here you have something in 2200 theaters get taking up 2200 screens that could literally be showing commercials probably doing better numbers than this not even making not even making across three days three weeks into its release not making two and a half million dollars abysmal terrible atrocious and this was supposed to be like i said before the big setup film right because the marvels oh my god it was gonna you know, spin off Monica Rambo into doing whatever the piss she's going to continue to do. He's going to send Captain Marvel back into the cosmic side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it was going to allow Amon Vellani's Kamala Khan to set up the Young Avengers. And we already know the fate of that. And it's like, Amon Vellani, as much as I like her, and I think that she does some really good interviews and has a really base take on things, she's having to petition the public. It's like, do you guys want the Young Avengers? Oh, trust me, they've already voted with their wallet, and unfortunately, yeah, no, not so much. But the other big thing, well, probably the only big takeaway, hell, it was a big part of their marketing for this, was setting up what comes next. What comes next? Well, of course, we all know it's the X-Men and the first mutant to make its canonical appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe was, in fact, Kelsey Grammer's Beast. We've seen production stills of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and who even knows what the hell is going to end up happening with that. Is it going to be a part of the official timeline? Is it going to be something where, you know, Wolverine's dead by the end? Is it going to officially, in some more concrete fashion, establish mutants in the MCU? Don't know for sure, but the one that we've seen on screen first was Beast. Was it Kelsey Grammer? Well, it was his likeness. It was kind of looking like AI digital recreation over the top, so... 
can't quite be certain if Kelsey Grammer was actually there doing anything for it, but the shot of him there confirms that the X-Men are going to be in the universe. And of course, Kelsey Grammer is confident he'll play X-Men's Beast again. Mostly because, well, given the fact that it's going to be relying so heavily on CGI, even though he is a much older gentleman than the last time that he donned the blue makeup, that's a role that he can unironically do for as long as he wants. A very low intensive role for him. And even though Disney is notoriously stingy with its paychecks, if Kelsey Grammer wants to do this, he has every ability to do as such because he's somebody who's been in the game for, what, five decades, if not more than that? Hell, being a part of two of the most successful television shows of all time, he's got that type of money, okay? He's got the type of money where he can take whatever job he wants for however long he wants. So if he's saying that, yeah, no, okay, my hope is that you will see him again. I can say for a certain amount of confidence that you will. I would love to. Well, fantastic, man. So that was a recent interview that he gave to The Wrap. And well, he also gave another interview as well. And this one right here is, well, is uh, probably causing Disney to shake in there chairs they're gonna start literally shaking because kelsey Grammer reaffirmed the fact that he is a staunch trump supporter and well i don't think the industry much cares for anything like that bbc host claims paramount cut fraser star kelsey Grammer's interview short once he said he still supported donald trump hmm hmm there's nothing wrong with that like I'm a Trump supporter. People's politics, okay, for as insufferable as a lot of people in Hollywood are when it comes to their individual politics, I can do this weird thing, and I encourage you to do so as well. You can separate the art from the artist. Hell, I like sports. There are a ton of insufferable, specifically basketball players, where what they say off the court is a buck-ass wild, but on the court, I can appreciate their accomplishments there as well. And when it comes to acting, 1,000%. Some of the most allotted figures in all of cinematic history were some insufferable lefties. I'm not going to hold that against them. It's the environment that they grow up with. But for every default Democrat with their leftist capitulations, every once in a while you'll have a Kurt Douglas, or I'm sorry, Kurt Russell. I always keep saying that the wrong way, but fan of both anyways. Uh, Mel Gibson, and now Kelsey Grammer. And because they simply just, you know, check one box every four years. Oh no, we need to handle them. Like they're basically trying to advocate for the uh, resurrection, or rather the establishment of the Third Reich. Ay, 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 calm yourselves for a second. BBC journalist Justin Webb said Monday in his interview with Kelsey Grammer was cut short by Paramount Plus's PR team. That's very important because Paramount Plus is distributing the revitalized Frasier series, which is, it's strange to think about. I was never one to watch Frasier or something like that. When it was on its original run, I was a little bit too young to appreciate the more highbrow material that was out there. And it's not something that I've ever been enticed to go back to, but I'm glad it's out there for the people that like Frasier. It's still more or less an evergreen story, as far as I know. Reiterated his support for former President Donald Trump. Grammer said that he's doing the publicity rounds to promote the rebooted Frasier, which is being carried by Paramount+. Plus. Yes, it's one of those things for as few advertisements as I do end up just tacitly consuming. I see that, you know, it's being promoted very, very well. Gra um, in the interview with Webb, which was broadcast on BBC Radio 4 Today Show, Grammer spoke about how Roseanne Barr, one of Trump's most vocal supporters in Hollywood, and what she recently did to Bill Maher, well, that was awfully nice as well. Just once again showing that, wow, for every time some idiot wants to come out and say, well, Bill Maher's kind of based, okay, he's one of those good, uh, good liberals that are out there. No, 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 no. He's just a stuffed suit trying to say whatever he can in order to maintain relevance. I encourage you, if you're interested, go and check out that very short clip. But okay, talking about, yes, Roseanne Barr influenced his decision to play Dr. Fraser Crane once again, as she resurrected her role of Roseanne in 2018. And some of the scuttlebutt, I might end up doing a Roseanne video here in the near future. What we're hearing from behind the scenes when that show ended up, you know, returning to the screens and then just became an overnight success it was the number one show on television throughout the entire season it's not like it popped a cheap rating for everybody going oh this is gonna just trigger the nostalgia berries no 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 it was number one with a bullet across every single network 
But there were also plans to just get rid of Roseanne from the earliest parts of the series' development. And now, well, isn't it continuing on? Or it did in some form or fashion as the Connors? Does anybody even care about that? Anyways... The reference to Barr, who appeared on the campaign trail with Trump recently, led Webb to ask Grammer if he still supported the ex-president. If you're going to ask the question, um, shouldn't you let the guy ask? Okay, I am, and I'll let that be the end of it, Grammer replied. Exactly, I'm talking about my show. Why, why do we have to spin into politics, okay? It doesn't really make all that much sense. And yeah, no, he said his piece totally fine with that. That's a great way to approach it. This is what you get from a, a veteran in the biz. Webb went on to say that there is more to that story. I actually have to say, oh, I have to say, actually, Kelsey Grammer himself was perfectly happy to go on talking about it. Webb said in the interview concluded, Paramount Plus's PR people, less happy that he talked about it at some length. Webb joked that they were really thrilled that he had brought it up. Oh, so you, once again, you know, example 9,738 this week of the BB being scummy fox, but I should stress that he was perfectly happy to talk about why he supports Donald Trump and uh, still does in the coming election. Oh, so okay, you're gonna go ahead and fill in the blanks that the PR department and that uh, Kelsey Grammer actually didn't articulate himself. He said, oh, he was more than happy to continue to expound upon his well thought out decision, but let me go ahead and you know just uh, make it clear to everybody he supports the insurrectionist. Okay, Paramount Plus's PR team didn't immediately respond to dailymail.com's request for comment grammar openly supported trump while he was in office one of the very few currently active you know hollywood somebodies and given how quickly you know paramount plus okay because if they were asking about are you are you gonna support biden he's done such a great job the citations needed in the 2024 election you think they would have cut off the talk right there I highly fucking doubt it, given the fact that Paramount Plus also distributes that fucking dog shit Star Trek Discovery program and several other incredibly fucking woke properties. But perhaps this is going to end up singling, er, signaling a change for the MCU in general. I think that, you know, Frasier is going to be as successful as it's going to be, regardless, or er, however long Kelsey Grammer wants to run with the character. But if the MCU, okay, is saying that, no, 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 we're not going to do a reboot. No, 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 Robert Downey Jr. is not going to be coming back. Yeah, I'm sure you just haven't backed up the Brinks truck quite yet. But if they're going to be doing a hard reboot like that, well, they have the perfect pivot point because they don't want to be politically charged this time around because that's what ended up sinking the business, or the, sinking the brand in the first place. Right, guys? It wasn't the abysmal writing or anything like that. It's the goddamn politicization of things. They have so many uh, different arrows to just go ahead and pull out of their quiver in order to obfuscate from the fact that, well, you pay peanuts, you fucking get monkeys. But good on Kelsey Grammer for not backing down from some slimy fucking journalists. I wish him nothing but the best with his new streaming show i guess it's an old streaming show he's giving the people what they want obviously because i don't think anybody twisted his arm and it's like you know you know frazier has been off the air for you know coming up on 20 years do, 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 do you want to bring it back for our their streaming service no no no. this is something that he wanted to do this is something that obviously the people wanted as well and it's also something else that you know people in general want from their entertainment want from their information want from everything that they're consuming a little bit of authenticity so with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.